Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to continue talking about our React basics by introducing another key component into using React components, which is going to be state. Now, in this video, we're going to show you how to set the state for a given component, how to retrieve that state, and how to modify it. We're also going to be showing a very basic and a very important lifecycle method that's going to be triggered once our component has rendered. So let's get going on that right now. Okay, so this is one of two more videos before we start getting into building sort of a real world application. And this is just going to round out sort of our foundation so that once we get into building, uh, we can concentrate more on what we're building and less about maybe some of the techniques, right? Because now we know that you can create new components with this create class method. Inside of here, we can have props, we can have default props, and we can render our component right here. Now in this past example, we saw this return statement and we passed in a greeting and that greeting then returned a person's name if that name exists. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about state. Now state is on a per component basis and that state is within the component itself. So let's go ahead and actually just show sort of some basic stuff about scope. We're going to be just setting and then resetting sort of scope here. So the way we can do that is inside of our create component, we're going to do this inside of our hello world component. Now we can set this after our prop stuff right down here. We can simply just say get initial state. And this is in camel case like so. Now we can simply just have a colon and we can have a function. And inside of this function is going to just essentially be an object that's being returned. So just like our get default props, we can just return and then have some brackets here and we're just returning simply an object. This is object is going to each have a property and a value. So let's say for instance, we wanted to have the value be equal to one. Okay, so this is just a basic initial state. And now we want to render that value onto the screen. And inside of our return function, I'm going to essentially have double brackets here like so. And inside of these brackets, I'm going to say this dot state. Now we had this dot props before. Now we have this dot state. And we want to return value. So we can do that simply with this dot state dot value, like so. Now when we save this, we head back to our page, we're going to get an error. I'm going to refresh this, things aren't going to work. Now you might be wondering why that is, because it looks like we had everything fine. Basically, the big problem is, and it looks like I made a mistake in addition to the one that I meant to make. So let's come back up here. We need a comma after this get initial state. Like I said before, this is an object. So this is a property and an object here. And we need to have a comma because render is also uh, the next property in this object. Okay, now that that is fixed, we can come here and find the error that I wanted you to find. Basically, it's having a problem here. Now you might be wondering what, what the problem is. We did everything right. Well, you actually need to wrap your components in another div at this point, or, or just some sort of wrapping character. Because what we're returning here, if you're using JSX, you need to have at least something wrapping around it. So we can say div, and inside of this div, we can just put our stuff. Now this worked fine before because we had an H1 and that was wrapping all of the content. However, now that we have this additional state here, we need something wrapping that like so. Okay, so now we should be able to refresh and see this hello world. And then we have a one right here. So we're now setting the state. Now let's say we wanted to actually get the current state. Let's say we wanted to modify it and have it re change on the screen. So right now we have this hello world and then one, we're going to be using a new lifecycle method that we haven't seen yet. And then we're going to go over in much more detail once we're actually building an application. But this is going to be the component did mount. Now component did mount is basically going to say, well, the component mounted, now we can do some stuff. Now keep in mind that that is a very sort of basic understanding of it. But really, this is going to run once the component has mounted. So we can say component did mount. So keep in mind that this is only going to run once, so we don't have to worry about this firing a whole bunch of times. 
It's only going to run at the moment that the component mounted. Okay, so in component did mount. Now we have a function just like we did before. Now let's go ahead and get the state and let's modify the state. So to first modify the state, we need to set this dot set state in camel case. And this is a function that takes an object. And inside of this set state, we're going to want to pass in value spelled correctly, and we're gonna pass in a new value. So once this component's mounting, it's resetting the state to value of two. I'll refresh this. You should see that hello world is now set to two, and we never actually even see the one. So when the component's mounting, it's setting this to two. But let's say we wanted to, instead of just saying this directly, we wanted to increment on the original value. Well, we can simply just call state just like we did down here, and we can say this dot state dot value, and we can say plus, let's say 19. So this should give us a value of 20 because we have one plus 19 equals 20. There you can see we now have hello world 20. So this dot set state is going to allow you to reset your state and this dot state dot value allows you to get your value whether it's on the template or in your javascript now that's an important part to realize in react is the stuff inside of these curly brackets is just javascript since we're inside of a script file the things that are weird here are sort of the html right the fact that we have html but simply having brackets at all is letting us use javascript for instance this bracket and then outputting the variable here is just outputting the variable. And that variable is just equal to either world or another component. Now inside of this, this.props.name is just the JavaScript value for this.props.name along with this.state.value. So that's something too important to recognize when writing this code. I know it can sometimes seem abstract. You're just typing things if you don't necessarily understand what and why you're doing it. However, it's important to know that this dot state dot value is just outputting the value of this JavaScript. And you can, of course, use that up here as well. And all this stuff are just functions inside of an object, which is this react dot create class. Hello world. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to create a click function, and that's going to allow us to actually increment the state. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video. Hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. Also, Next Level CSS Animations and Transitions is now available for purchase at store.leveluptutorials. It's the first premium tutorial series from Level Up Tutorials. It's two hours and a little bit more of animating with CSS. It teaches you how to make performative animations, how to make practical animations, and how to sort of replicate some popular animations already. It even includes an easing file which contains some really basic easings that you can drop into your CSS preprocessor or just CSS in general, along with code examples and templates for each lesson. So as always, this is Scott and thanks for watching. Bye.